video, I'm gonna be showing you how I did this built-in wall art in my shop. I did it in an abstract mountain scene, but the concept can easily be adapted to anything that you're personally into. So let's get into it. Members from Triton Tools was hanging out with me in my shop and we ended up with an extra day to do a project. Since my walls are made from full sheets of plywood, I started by moving things off the wall space where I wanted my mountain range to go. I quickly unscrewed it from my studs and then laid it flat on my workbench to get started. Okay. Look how cool this is. It's like a big marshmallow, isn't it? Don't eat it. <laughs> because I like to game plan beforehand, I took the time to model the scene I would be going after in a 3D modeling software. This allowed me to get a good visual and to make lots of changes before making any cuts. It also allowed me to quickly pencil out the scene on my sheet of plywood as I was able to use different references, such as the edge of the plywood, to pull measurements for the start and stopping point of each line. You can see that I'm using the track from my track saw as my main straight edge for this. However, I did pull in a variety of straight edges to use. I first thought to make these lines using a track saw, but the problem with the round blade is that it will leave a sloped cut and mating up two lines, such as all the peaks, wouldn't come out cleanly. So instead I used the router with a router adapter for the track saw. This is an adapter that is attached to the base of the router and mates to the track saw track so that you can use the track saw track to make straight lines with the router. That's pretty cool. You'll see Mark from Triton acting as my pit crew as I called it. And I do recommend having a second person on hand if you take this route. Having two people to clamp and unclamp, move and then reclamp made this project go really quick. For cutting in the lines, I'm using a quarter inch infinity spiral upcut bit, which left a really clean cut through that veneer, meaning I didn't have a lot of messy tear out to deal with later on. As for depth, I cut down about 3 eighths of an inch. After getting the second mountain completely cut out, I stopped to vacuum out and man, I was so excited that this was actually working out. For the sun, I swapped out that router adapter to the edge guide that comes with the router. You can use this not only as a regular edge guide, but also as a circle cutting jig. It attaches to the base of the router in the same fashion. Then I found center, stuck a brad nail in as a pinpoint, and then made my circle cut. Quick and easy, so back to the track adapter to finish making all of the straight line cuts, and we can move on to coloring it. Oh, and I also had to fix a mistake I made on my very first cut. I overshot the stop point, and by the time I realized it, it was far too past to really do anything about it. Filling it in was pretty simple. I cut a strip from a scrap piece of ply that fit into the groove. Once everything was cut, of course, we had to throw it up on the wall to see how it looked. Thanks. There you go, pit crew. This looks pretty good. Thanks. Well done. But let's go ahead and add some color to it. To prep the sheet, I first sanded all of the grooves. This was minimal since I was using a high quality bit for the cutting, but I did wrap a carpenter's pencil in sandpaper and run through each line to knock down those little fuzzies. Then I used my palm ROS on the entire sheet. And I only used 220 grit here because I wanted to make sure I didn't go through that very thin veneer of the plywood. Then I played around on a scrap piece of plywood with a few color options before going in on the real thing. Now I'm using paint for this, but I didn't want to 100% cover up the grain of the ply. So I'm using the whitewashing technique where I add water to thin it out and make it appear more like a stain. I'm using a two to one ratio, so two part water to one part paint. And once I had my color sorted and I knew which one was going where, I started applying with a foam brush. Like I said earlier, I wanted to leave the grooves raw for the meantime. I worked in small sections so that I could apply the color and then quickly wipe off the excess using a paper towel. It was easy with a foam brush to not go into another section with the coloring, but I made a mess a few times whenever it came to wiping it off. I don't know what I did. But I also discovered that using 220 grit sandpaper removes these spots easy enough without going through the veneer. So it's nothing to freak out about either way. Then it was the same process for the snow caps and the sun. However, on the snow caps, instead of wiping off the excess, this white really just washed out way too much. So I just left it on to dry completely. I left it all alone for roughly about an hour to dry before throwing it up on the wall. 
And it's so funny to me how much I love this. You know, I typically pick out my next build based on what I either am most motivated to make or what I need the most. However, this is why it's fun to work with other people or to participate in things that gives you parameters sometimes. What do you think? Oh, I love it. I love the concept. And uh, I'm really loving the colors. So, what do you think? I absolutely love this project. I'm really curious, if you did a mural, what would it be of? Be sure to leave me a comment down below and tell me. Also, in the description, don't forget to check out links to everything I used in this project and also links to all of my social media platforms if you'd care to follow me in real time on what I'm building, what I'm up to. That's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you on my next build.